Hello friends, this video on control and coordination part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this, let us start discussing about the plant hormones. So what are the different plant hormones and what do they actually do? Now the question is what causes these movements in plants? Whether we talk about the growth related gradual and slow movements or the nastic movements. So how does the external information gets communicated within the plants? For example, in case of uh, this touch me not plant also, the information that the plant is touched, that information has to reach the cells of the pulvinus. Right? So there has to be something which will actually carry the information. Similarly, in case of phototropism, so wherever light is there, light is in which direction, who communicates that information to the cells inside the plant. So there has to be some medium by some means by which the information gets communicated within the plants. Now in animals, electric impulse for fast communication is used. Now these electric impulse can reach only few cells. So that is why the concept of chemicals came up, right? When we discussed the coordination in animals, I discussed about all these things in detail. So that is why in animals, we had a nervous system as well as an endocrine system. Now in plants, we do not have any nervous or muscle tissue. So what is the alternative? So in plants, cells release some chemicals which diffuse and reach other cells. Then other cells have a means to detect the chemical, so they recognize or receive the information. So these chemicals are hormones. So it, it, the concept of hormones in the, is very similar to the concept of hormones in animals. So there also hormones are chemicals which are secreted by a cell and then they are recognized by other cells. So they diffuse off and spread like that. So these chemicals are produced somewhere and then they get transported so to some other site. That is, they diffuse from their area of production to their area of action. So what are plant hormones? So there are some naturally occurring plant hormones. These are some of the hormones which are found in plants. They are auxins, gibberellins, cytokinins, ethylene and abscisic acid. These are some of the naturally occurring plant hormones. Now let us see how these plant hormones actually help in the movements associated with the plant. Let us talk about auxins. Now auxins are the hormones which are produced at shoot tip in presence of light. So when there is light, this hormone will get produced only at the tip of the shoots. These hormones promote cell division and elongation. So when, whenever anything supports cell division, that means the number of cells will increase. Cell elongation, that means cells will get enlarged. And these two things will actually result in cell growth and which in turn will result in plant growth. Now how this growth actually happens? Now what happens is that in presence of unidirectional light, auxin is produced at the shoot tips. Now in presence of light, the concentration of auxin is more at the shoot tips because it is getting produced at the shoot tips. Now, now we are talking of unidirectional light. That means one part of the plant is exposed to light whereas the other part of the light, a plant is, is at a shady region. Now since the concentration of auxin is more on one side, so diffusion will take place from region of higher concentration towards region of lower concentration. So let us look at this example. Now here let us suppose light is coming from this side, right? So let us consider a plant like this. Let us suppose this is a plant. Let us say this is the direction of sunlight. So that means this part of the plant is exposed to sunlight and this part of the plant is under shady region, right? Now in presence of sunlight, auxin will get produced at the shoot tips. Now since the concentration of auxins on this side will be more and on this side it will be less, so what will happen? The auxins will diffuse from this side to this side. So this is the shady side of the plant. Now what will happen since all of the auxin will start diffusing towards the shady side, so the concentration of auxin will become more on the shady side. So more auxins will get accumulated on the shady side. 
and what is the purpose of auxin auxin causes cell division and elongation now on the shady side the auxins will cause the cells to increase in number and size so the growth will be more on the shady side now what will happen that the plant which is on the shady side that means this side plant will start growing more so this will start growing like this the shady side but the growth on the brighter side will still be less now when this side growth is too much what will happen gradually the pressure on this side the shady side is more so gradually they will start bending towards the towards this side so this results in a bending of the plant towards the direction of light got it clear so what happens is that auxins are produced at the shoot tips in presence of light now these auxins diffuse towards the shady side so more auxins get accumulated on the shady side so more the plant grows more on the shady side as a result a bending happens in presence of light so it the, this bending this phototropism is not observed in presence of light it is observed only in presence of unidirectional light like in this example here the light is coming only from one direction now let us suppose had there been another window this side and light would have been coming from this side also in that case the plant will not bend towards any side because from both the sides it is getting equal amount of light so this scenario comes up the phototropism scenario comes up only in presence of unidirectional light so auxins are the hormones which actually help in growth related plant movements let us talk about some other hormones like gibberellins and cytokinins so gibberellins also help in stem growth it results in increase in size of fruit and flower so you would have seen there is a small bud and then the bud gradually grows into a flower for fruits also first it will be a small size then gradually it will grow bigger so this increase in size of fruit flower as well as the stem is caused by this hormone gibberellins there is another hormone called cytokinins which again promotes cell division so you can see that auxins gibberellins cytokinins they all promote the growth either the plant growth or the size growth of fruit and flower but they promote growth cytokinin also delay aging that means due to the presence of this hormone the plants do not die quickly so they remain young for a longer time it regulates transport of nutrients so when it transports nutrients then all parts of the plant will get equal amount of nutrients and they will stay healthy and young so we can say that auxins gibberellins and cytokinins these all plant hormones promote growth let us talk about another plant hormone that is abscisic acid this is a hormone which inhibits growth so it doesn't allow the plant to grow it stops the growth so it reverses the effects of auxins and gibberellins it results in wilting of leaves so that is why you would have seen that if had this hormone been not there in that case the plant will keep growing forever and it will never die but because of the presence of this abscisic acid the leaves wilt they dry up and they get decayed so this is brought about by abscisic acid so everything in nature happens in balance with each other like on one hand we have hormones which encourages growth in plants so on the other side we also have hormones which stops the growth in plants so these are some of the naturally occurring plant hormones so we can see that how uh, in plants also coordination happens with the help of the phytohormones and how different movements happen in plants in response to the external stimuli like light water chemicals and gravity thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again